to share with you uh, my journey in chess right from the beginning. I learned chess when I was six. I saw my elder siblings play with each other, my brother and sister, and immediately went to my mother and tested her if she could teach me as well, which she did. Then in about uh, six months, they noticed that I actually seemed to be quite interested in chess. So my sister found a chess club uh, near where we lived, and I enrolled in the Tao Chess Club. And pretty soon, along rolled my first uh, chess tournament. Of course, I lost my first three games. And uh, this meant that, of course, I dropped to the bottom of the pairing chart. And uh, there was an odd number of participants. So, uh, I got the bye. Which is my first win in chess. And I remember that I sat there waiting for the hour to pass so that I could claim my buy. And then, uh, I mean, I was, I remember being so proud and happy of this win. Um, it's a bit embarrassing now, but I still think that when you're six or seven, you can enjoy something like in a way we, for, we forget to do later. After that, I had a few uh, fun years where there was no specific goal or anything in mind. I was just playing, trying to get better, playing in competitions. So I, uh, the main thing is my mother thought I should play every weekend. And so I would go every weekend and play either the tournament uh, or uh, just play with for, for fun. And uh, it seemed that I was not making a lot of progress. But this is deceptive because you actually can't tell if you're making progress or not. In uh, 1982, I suddenly moved up a notch. And I cannot really say why. Um, I was playing the same tournaments with the same players, but suddenly I started scoring much better. So, uh, I did well in a couple of tournaments. And then actually, uh, I got the chance to come to go at twice. I came here for the National Sub-Junior Championship and then a couple of months later for the National Junior Chess Championship and I won both of them. So uh, I still have very very pleasant memories of this because Goa was really the place where I broke through to Indian Chess. And um, after that the next thing that beckoned was the title of a Grandmaster. Now at that point no Indian had become a Grandmaster. So, this was a big challenge for every one of us. In fact, the one question that we were asked in chess circles was simply, uh, when will India have a grandmaster? In 1987, I mean, I spent 85 and 86 trying for the grandmaster title. I came close on several occasions, but never quite managed to clinch it. I was always just a half point shot. And then I decided to uh, or was decided for me if you like. I had to actually finish my 12th standard exams. So, uh, but the, the truth is, I had already begun to uh, get a bit bored chasing this GM title. And it would become a bit frustrating and so on. So, uh, I took three months off. So, January to March when the exams happened. I took those three months off to try and quickly catch up on my studies. And, uh, I didn't get a chance to look at a chessboard for three months. So, uh, I think the other students found it very ha hard to understand why there was one boy here who really seemed to enjoy studying. But the thing is, I was already a little bit sick of chess and I was just happy to get some change. Of course, right after this, uh, I immediately, after the exams, I tried to get back on track to get my GM back. And this time it went much faster. I uh, won the World Junior Championship in uh, July and then by December I become a Grandmaster. And so what happens? Uh, why does this suddenly happen that you are working very hard for something, you don't get it and then one day you uh, stop thinking about it and suddenly it just happens? Well, the usual explanation is pressure and I think that's correct. But I think also um, 
if something stops being pleasurable and it simply becomes a sort of goal, then uh, it's much harder to perform well. And I think these three months when I did my exams and then came back to chess allowed me to appreciate it much more. Uh, what I was really missing in chess a little bit before. And uh, I think that's why I got my Grandmaster ready by the end of that year. Then a very funny thing happened to me, where uh, right after I got my Grandmaster title, suddenly after becoming a Grandmaster, I couldn't attain the, the level anymore. I was no longer making norms for about two or three tournaments. And uh, I spoke to another Grandmaster, and he said basically, it happens to everyone. Right after you become a Grandmaster, you, nobody makes, the first, the first six months are always at the right off. So don't worry about it too much. And uh, here I think what's different is for many, many years there was, as soon as I came to a tournament, I knew what I had to do. You knew that at the end of this tournament I need to have seven points because that's the target, or seven and a half or six and a half or whatever. But everything was set, you had a, a very clear goal. But once you become a Grandmaster, well, the title is never going to be taken away from you. So suddenly you don't have this thing in front of you and you lose this focus completely. It also eases the pressure on you a bit. You think, well, I can make six and a half, but I can make six as well, it's no big deal. And suddenly you go completely off. I think it's similar in, let's say, cycling, when it's much easier to keep your pace if there are other people around you, like a peloton, rather than if you are simply cycling alone, because you have nothing to uh, compare yourself with. Anyway, this period slowly passed. At some point you understand that uh, you, get, you get a bit fed up of these sort of lousy performances and then uh, you return to normal area. But I think it shows that the importance of having a very uh, specific goal in front of you. Not every goal can be so easy like a Grandmaster title uh, in sense, the sense of giving you something easy to uh, target. But uh, it's very important to have something that you're aiming for or looking forward to. After that, I had to break into the higher levels of uh, chess, to the world top. And uh, the first thing was to gain rating points, ranking points, go around the world playing everywhere. So I had a couple of years of this, uh, basically in 1988, 1989, just enjoyed myself, uh, traveled around. Uh, missed as much college as I could. And then uh, in 91, I actually became a candidate. That means I was in the last 16 for the World Championship. And this meant that suddenly all sorts of new doors started opening for me. I had uh, invitations to some of the best tournaments in the world. And uh, well, that's very exciting. So it was a very pleasant period. But uh, Initially, it was enough for me just to uh, have one good achievement per tournament because that's what all people really expected from me. So if I reached the tournament and I beat Karpov or I finished third, it was enough. And you didn't have to say anything more. But after a couple of months of this, uh, it started to feel a bit hollow. I, uh, I found that it was no longer so satisfying just having one little thing that you can hide behind in the tournament. You actually want to do well. So, this hunger helped me first do very well in a tournament in uh, the Netherlands in October. And then in December, I won uh, a tournament ahead of both Kapo and Casper uh, in Italy. And uh, that was a huge uh, breakthrough for me. Then something funny started to happen. Whereas the whole of 91, all the top players were saying what a talented boy I was and how I had a great future. After I won this tournament, they started saying that I was very weak and actually I'm missing uh, lots of uh, qualities and what have you. But I found this very strange that you can be talented before you win the tournament and uh, after you win it somehow you're not so talented. But I think it's, uh, it's more a thing of when people feel threatened by you, they're not so nice. <laughs> and uh, as long as you're not really threatening them, then they're very sweet to you. But still it's a bit bizarre that right after winning the tournament I had to read what a weak player I was. So, uh, after that again I went through a period of about 8 years where I was searching for the World Championship. 
uh, I would come very close on many occasions, but uh, always just uh, miss by a little bit. And it's again this phase, you can see it happening again and again. I needed to miss something several times before you finally get it right. Um, mainly what happens is, uh, you re it begins to sink in in a very profound way that something isn't complete until you actually do it 100%. Uh, and coming close, initially it always feels satisfying, but at some point you have to get past that and actually get the job done. So each time I found that this thing tended to happen, I uh, became world champion. And now the same thing happened to me again that happened to me in, uh, when I became a grandmaster, that my level just dropped off. Um, again, it's, it's mainly a thing of emptiness, that uh, when you win something really big that's been dominating your thinking for a long time, suddenly you don't know what to do with yourself next. So, uh, funnily enough, in the period when I started playing badly, initially I, I had good results. So I, I did well in a tournament in Holland, then I won a tournament in Mexico. But the danger signs were already there. And uh, because the results were still good, I was not paying much attention. But the thing is, uh, people perhaps because of my reputation or because uh, of one reason or the other, had not started to punish me yet. And so I felt that uh, there was no real urgency, there was nothing really happening. But then that year in uh, July, I had the worst result of my life in a tournament in Germany. And this, uh, I started off with two losses in the first half. And I made a decision which I kind of regret. Mentally, I just gave up on the tournament. There's just nothing to do here. But I'm going to try and get out with as little damage as possible. So my aim was just to minimize my losses and, and get the tournament over with and run away. In fact, uh, it was proved very difficult to do. Uh, I lost two more games and finished in last place and probably simply the worst result of my career. It's, uh, it's very hard to uh, just settle on some sort of bad performance. Sometimes even if you want to do an average performance, you have to try for something higher and uh, you might get an average performance. But if you aim for an average performance, chances are you'll get a disaster. Um, and then I had a stretch of maybe eight or nine months where I just, nothing seemed to work. By this point, I was drastically changing everything in my routine. Of course, it would have been nicer to make these changes before the disaster, which is one thing I learned, is that you have to identify, you have to um, smell danger a little bit earlier and get this feeling for when um, your chest isn't at the level it needs to be and address the problems much quicker. But more to the point, uh, after this disaster I was experimenting a lot and trying many many different things. But just nothing seemed to work. My results just stayed quite uh, bad. Anyway, things went till about uh, mid-2002. And uh, what happened then was I went to a rapid tournament, which is my favorite kind of uh, chess. I generally like uh, rapid chess and playing games much faster. And I was quite surprised that in, uh, in the press, hardly anyone even mentioned me as a favorite for that tournament. Uh, I mean, it was, it was just a year ago where I was considered a favorite for almost every kind of tournament, and suddenly, you come to something and people are not even uh, looking at you. But uh, I actually decided that was very enjoyable. For once, after many, many months, there was no pressure on me whatsoever. And I felt very relaxed. I went to the tournament. Uh, we were just having uh, quiet evenings every day.